The Solar Podcast is brought to you by Continental Energy Solutions. I'm Tim Montague, your host. Today, we continue our journey to reduce the soft costs of solar. My guest, I'm so pleased to say, is Jan Rippingale, the CEO and founder of Blue Banyan Software. Welcome to the show, Jan. Thank you, Tim. I'm really glad to be here. You know, I've had Tom Tancy on the show twice, and we were talking in the pre-show that whether or not we're going to talk about Orange Button, we are going to talk about Orange Button. And that is a collaboration between multiple organizations, including yourselves now. And it's a process to understand what is Orange Button, what are soft costs, and how we can bring soft costs down in the solar industry. So I think it would be very useful if we started actually with a high level conversation about soft costs, what they are, what they are not, and then Orange Button and your software solution and how that helps installers and you work with installers across the spectrum uh, from residential to CNI to utility scale. Yes. So we're going to talk about all of these things, but let's talk first. Uh, well, very first, give our listeners some background on yourself. How did you get into the energy industry? I got into the ener energy industry fundamentally because I wanted to be an astronaut and president when I grew up. And so when I was a kid, that, I, that was my dream. So I went and studied at NASA and did work for NASA. And that's how I got introduced to solar originally. Way back when solar was called, you know, terrestrial solar versus the solar that you would be putting up on satellites. So that was my first introduction. It was always high tech and always had its cool aura about being, you know, where the world should be headed. That was where I got started in, in solar. I started, I went in and worked in computer science on Wall Street, and I did a lot of mobile device programs for Fortune 500 companies like Pepsi Cola North America. And gradually I made my way back to California and was living near Hopland and had an opportunity to go take some solar courses there at the Hopland Solar Living Institute and reignited my passion met some new people, including Dan Marino from um, what was DC Power at the time. And so I started helping them out with technology. So at one point I aspired to be a solar installer and I just couldn't get out of the gravitational pull of the software technology. Very well. And, and so what are the, what are the roots of Blue Banyan? How did you find out about Orange Button and and uh, how did you come to create Blue Banyan? So Blue Banyan is a, a software company that is based on NetSuite. And we went through trying to create three different versions of software to run solar installation companies, starting with the versions that we had at DC Power. And then as we added financiers and learned about those processes, and then they changed and came up and, and life on the solar coaster. And we ended up deciding that NetSuite and as an accounting platform was where you needed to start to build any software platform. And you had to start on the accounting because you never ever wanted to recreate the accounting and because it had to be auditable. If you've got system size in your CRM and it's not an auditable event when the system size changes, you don't have an auditable process because the system size is absolutely an accounting event in the solar world. So that's where we got started and built out a product for a micro vertical. Solar is known as a micro vertical to the NetSuite Oracle world called Solar Success. And we have been helping solar installers run their businesses with it since then. For me, this was a passion play because when my daughter was born about five years ago, I became aware that the biggest threat to the next generation, I became really conscious to me that the biggest threat to the next generation is going to be climate change. And by using technology to address that, you know, I have a chance to, to make a difference. So it'll be a, a good place for her to live as well. So this was me deciding to jump in the ring again and start Blue Banyan. And how long ago was that? Five years. Gotcha. <laughs> so, so 
can an installer that is not on NetSuite use Blue Banyan? You actually need to be on NetSuite in order to use Solar Success, Blue Banyan Solar Success. Got so that. it uses NetSuite as the platform. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, climate change is one of numerous existential threats that humanity faces. I also am passionate for helping us not go there uh, or de-risking that particular one. There are some more uh, <clears throat> time sensitive <laughs> threats as well. Uh, the artificial general intelligence and singularity and the takeoff of that is one that I pay a lot of attention to. Um, and, and so, it's, it's a cousin, um, and, but I grew up doing backyard solar thermal in Albuquerque, New Mexico, mm -hmm. learning about nuclear waste, fighting WIP in Southern New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And now I've come full circle and I work directly in the PV industry. It is uh, a wonderful opportunity to be part of the transition to a safer, more resilient and sustainable future, potentially. Uh, exactly. We have we have to dodge many bullets, but uh, so let's get into it. Soft costs in the solar industry, uh, as we were saying, upwards of a third of a solar project could be identified as soft costs. Uh, well, and, and actually two thirds of a solar project, the Department of Energy for residential, two thirds are soft okay. costs. They're okay. just saying that the Department of Energy is saying on a residential project, one third of those soft costs could be reduced. Gotcha. And so, so what, what is, what is one third of two thirds? Uh, actually, so, so the soft cost in the U S would be 66% of the project yeah. and in Europe, they're 30% of the project. Oh. So so it's, it's that 36% of the project. Yep. That's the third that they would like to get rid of. Yeah. The Department of Energy is like, we, if we work together, we could actually collaborate our way yeah. and reduce this expense for everybody. But we're talking about, you know, 22 to 25% basically of, of the cost of a solar project that could be reduced uh, according to the experts. Correct. And and that's, uh, that's a good chunk of change, right? That's gonna make solar more affordable and it will help us lean in and accelerate the energy transition because solar is not obtainable by all residents or business owners or municipalities or schools or whatever, right? Solar is still expensive technology. It's a major investment and it's not a no brainer, right? I wish I wish I could say that it was a no brainer. It's a no brainer from a from a perspective of the sustainability and the long term perspective on humanity. We have to clearly embrace clean energy technologies. But the for the day in day out resident, right? This is not a no brainer. This is a major investment. It's totally doable. But it's it's a matter of rejiggering your priorities, right? So absolutely. Um, what are some of the pieces, though, of, of soft costs as identified? So some of the cost, soft costs are, are cost of the sale, cost of acquisition, so sales commissions. Some of them are permitting, permitting fees, and then errors around permitting and inspection, and the time, extra truck rolls, all the stuff around how do you actually get permitting to happen. Other soft costs are less actionable certain levels of taxes, certain, um, you know, basic accounting systems you need to have in place. But then there's elements of the accounting system that can be done better and can reduce soft costs. So the soft costs are the part of actually running your business, interfacing with utilities, interconnection, permitting, and actually getting paid, those sides of things. Yeah, I'm looking at your, at your website the the so the solar software that you make is called Solar Success. So if you go to Blue Banyan B L U Banyan B A N Y A N dot com, I'll put this on screen in a minute. But and and you have a nice little chart there. Uh, 
permitting and inspections, interconnection, supply chain costs, installation labor, sales and marketing, aka customer acquisition, and overhead, aka general and administration, and profit. Correct. And you can uh, theoretically attack all of these things. <clears throat> And it's a question of how you do that. Um, you know, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and others have created uh, Solar App, right? Uh -huh. Which is part of this ecosystem of reducing soft costs to make permitting much more seamless uh -huh. for uh, starting with residential solar, is my understanding. So, um, Let's step back for a second though. So we've got soft costs on the table. We, we know for sure that they can be reduced, right? Because the Europeans have done it and the Australians have done it. Uh -huh. So there's real, there's real tangible information that, uh, that there's an opportunity here, a problem to solve, so to speak. Correct. Income, uh, Orange Button and SunSpec Alliance which if you don't know that, just Google it, SunSpec Alliance. And I've done a couple of shows with Tom Tansey, who is their executive director and chairman of the board. And now you have stepped into the fray with Blue Banyan and are leveraging Orange Button is my understanding. How, what is Orange Button and how do you take Orange Button and make it tangible? So, so Orange Button is a taxonomy. It's basically an agreement about the terms that we're going to use when we're transferring data with an, an API, which is a programming interface between applications. And if we're all using the same terms to describe a site, for instance, then we're able to consistently say, here's the site and here's the energy consumption information. And here are the structures and here's the risk criteria for those structures. And then we can feed that into which AHJ that, that the site might be associated with and determine what kind of PV system or battery system we want to generate. So it is really an information taxonomy. And I expect that site is going to be the primary object that we will start to exchange in our APIs. And the benefit of this is that all of the solar success data is we have translated to the site object and then we're able to interface, we're able to build that API once and then interface with multiple softwares. So we're able to interface with 17 terawatts Bodhi software and get the referral.com software. And solar app is going to be, have a JSON, an orange button compliant um, API as well using the site object. So by by taking the solar success data and packaging it in the site object technically, then I'm able to pass it to any of these software vendors. They're able to digest that information and, and move forward. So I just have to build it once, then everybody can use it. That is the advantage of, of having Orange Button and a common taxonomy. And are you suggesting though that Solar App is a parallel universe to Blue Banyan or yeah, what is the relationship? So, so Solar App has two, two connection points with Solar Success and Blue Banyan, but, and they're both kind of, um, they're both utilizing Orange Button to do that. So one of the connection points between them is that both Solar App and Solar Success from Blue Banyan are using the AHJ registry. And the AHJ registry was put out by SunSpec and it uniquely identifies every authority having jurisdiction, every place you're gonna get your permit from um, in the United States. It's pulled together data from the census and from NREL about the solar permitting piece. And it's got this really fancy, um, polygon matching. So you can send in your address and it, based on the Latin long, it will tell you which AHJ applies to that address. So it's super simple functionality, but it uniquely identifies what that AHJ is. And so solar success, any, any client using solar success will have that AHJ identifier 
and solar app will also have that same AHJ identifier. So if we're both talking and saying, so someone is a user of solar success tells solar app, I want to submit a permit to this AHJ, solar app knows exactly which AHJ we're talking about because we are literally using the same identifier. Mm -hmm. And, but is, can installers use solar app instead of Blue Banyan? So solar app only does permitting. So, so the Blue Banyan solar success software has got accounting and inventory management for supply chain and, and field service scheduling and a whole lot more pieces. Solar app is just about submitting a permit to your AHJ. And so that step, solar success is able to submit the site object and the solar app API is, will consume it and then submit the permit. They're also going to have checklist questions about specific things that are gonna come back for the designers to say they agree with. And we are expecting that those checklist questions are going to get extended to inspection questions as well so that they will be in parallel. So what you got permitted for, we'll actually inspect that that was the same questions. Did you actually install what you, per what you got your permit for? Mm -hmm. And in that way, we can start transferring the data once when it was first generated and then consistently across um, and use it across the entire life cycle of a given project. Okay. Which will reduce the cost of doing business and keep everyone on the same page about what they're doing. Yeah. And so as we identified in the in, early in the show here, we're talking about trying to reduce soft costs overall by a third and of that third, what have you identified as an opportunity that Blue Banyan can reduce? So, so the, the most obvious impact that Blue Banyan has is, is by putting the project management and the accounting together, we are reducing the overhead costs for just running a project. So the overhead, the general and administrative profits, we have found that, that after six months, of, of going live that our clients are, are saving five cents a watt in the residential space on just overhead wages. So that translates if you've got an eight um, kilowatt house, because you, maybe you've got yourself and you're getting an EV, that that translates to 240, well, three to five cents is 240 to $400. Um, per project, if you're doing 100 projects a month, it's 24 to 40K a month in savings. And do you have those numbers for commercial installers? We don't have the numbers for commercial installers because it is harder to compare projects apples to apples. The, the projects are unique and complex enough mm -hmm. that that the, the hard comparisons are harder to do. Yeah. But the savings might be on the order of 10 X. It, it could be because of the additional complexity and the additional clarity. Um, so you can make better decisions faster. Those actually give you a much higher standard um, and, and a higher return than simply running the same decisions through without error the first time. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite books that someone pointed me to recently is called The Road Less Stupid, which sounds absolutely horrible on the title, maybe. No, I really appreciate that. <laughs> and I am totally digging it because it helps you have actual facts and data so you can make better decisions. And that is where you actually save the most money on the CNI and, and developer scale. Yeah, Elon Musk has become famous for saying, I want to be less wrong. <laughs> and uh, we're, let's face it, right? When we're, we're trying to figure the world out, we're mostly wrong because we just don't know. And we don't know what we don't know. Um, and, Except for and, sure we're making an estimate, which means, yeah, we don't have the full detail. And I can't, uh, you know... If, if we're able to dial this in the way you're talking about, uh, this, is, this is truly an, an awesome opportunity for the solar industry to be more competitive 
and inspire more facility owners, residents and commercial facility owners to get in the game. And, and, and the industry will, will grow even faster. If you think about what the 30% ITC did to the industry, mm -hmm. then you, you get a sense of what a 30% reduction in soft costs would do. It would be game changing. Yes. And so it, it is a problem we're solving. And the orange button taxonomy is, is a piece of it because then we're all speaking the same language. We can, we can actually coordinate and, and cooperate with each other in ways that we haven't been able to do it before. And every industry that has gone through a digitalization phase has had to have a taxonomy at the core in order to get there. So that is at the core of all this. And then if we've got these reference data sets like the AHJ registry, the product registry, we'd like to have a utility registry, then we're really starting to, if we're all actually talking about the exact same product because we've got the same product identifier, um, the clarity and ease of risk analysis and a problem solving and statistics about failure rates over time, all of this information, you know, grid stability becomes much more achievable and it actually becomes natural and expected. So that is, that is the outcome we are anticipating from this digitalization. And it is a slog to go through and do all the different work in the deceptive phase where you're just defining all the terms and getting everyone on the same page. Mm -hmm. And the results are starting to, to show up. We've got you know, multiple software systems able to interface with each other on the site object, bring in solar app on the site object and having common reference data set with the AHJ registry is, is actually delivering tremendous value right from the beginning. You know, accessing the AHJ registry is free and it's got an orange button compliant API so everyone can learn what it means to have an orange button compliant object right there in a simple way. And, and all you have to do is put in the address and you get the AHJ back. It's really simple, immediate value add and you know, no reason not to use it. Yeah. So if I'm an installer and um, I'm not using NetSuite, how hard is that first hump to get over uh, to use NetSuite? Does NetSuite talk to other accounting ERP systems? So, so NetSuite has a full API. It can talk to any, any accounting system that you've got. Mm -hmm. And so for some companies that are, maybe have a parent company on a different system, NetSuite can communicate with them. And it is really necessary to get your accounting in place for the rest of this to really have the benefit. So one of the culture changes that happens that is actually kind of a culture change in construction altogether is that often when you're running a construction project, the accounting accountants are like the mama hens running around, you know, trying to get all the information out of the project managers. Can we get paid yet? Can we get paid yet? Are we ready to go? Where's the money? Show me where the status is. And the accounting people don't, don't especially like that role. And the PMs don't especially like that role. And it's kind of, it's, it's really difficult. And the, in solar success, because the way the project management works is when you hit the milestone that's predefined, your milestone gets done and it automatically generates the invoice at the right time for the right amount. And all the accounting does is just look at the invoices that have been generated and pending approval set and say, yes, that is the right one. And that's the right amount. Go ahead and send it. And so it, it completely shifts where project management's automatically informing accounting what they need to do right out of the gate. And so this, the overhead of going around in and bothering everybody and nagging to get the information goes away, but also just the, the culture of what it is that you're doing goes away and changes altogether. 
it's a really fabulous shift. And without it, accounting is always going to be chasing project management because no one wants to put data in two places and they're just going to be chasing them down all the time. So it's, it's one of those core things like you need a foundation on your house um, <laughs> for your house to, to work. And you can't have a mobile home and it can't have wheels and you can do other stuff, but there's a lot of, a lot of ongoing value to, to building that foundation. Okay. So that's not a major barrier to entry though. It sounds like that um, most, most accounting systems can be connected to NetSuite and then you're off to the races and you can consider Blue Banyan. Yes, absolutely. And let's talk about onboarding. What, what is the onboarding process like? So it, it takes 90 to 100 days for most companies to go through the onboarding process. Usually it, we actually get started right off the bat with data migration. We actually just start that from the beginning. What are your historical projects and the key dates as you're going along so that it gets into the database? All by itself, that's actually a hugely valuable process and part to, to get normalized. And then we kick off a discovery phase about what the gaps might be between the software and what your processes are or where you might need to change the, the data to get the templates that you want for your projects. And then we go through user, we do that configuration, user acceptance testing where the power users go through and make sure that they know how to do everybody's job. And that sounds like they all should, but it's actually also another place where it's hugely insightful about what's going on today, where they didn't realize how this job was actually getting done. And then, then we do a training phase where we just sit everybody in the team down and say, okay, this is how you do a lead and how you get it to a project. And we go through that lead to project cycle and, and all the steps of, for doing your job. Then we have a cutover and you're off to the races. So 60 to 100 days, you said, right? It's, it's actually closer to 90 to 100 days. Okay. The, um, we have had people do it in 60 days. Um, and, but you got to run. It's really actually hard to do that. Okay. So, you know, three, to, three to four months. Yep. And, um, seems reasonable. Yep. What? It, go ahead. I was just going to say it takes three to four months to get started, but it's a great inventory of where your business is strong and weak right now. And mm -hmm. it, it brings everything up to the same minimum level. Mm -hmm. So that process is worth going through even before, and, and even before you're going to receive the ROI for it. Yeah. So let's talk a little more big picture. How many installers are using your tool? And are there any kind of case studies that we can drill down on as far as what that experience has been? and what, uh, what they would say in retrospect? Mm -hmm. So we've got about 40 installers who are using Solar Success, including the top three for the 2020 ranking from Solar Power World for the residential and number four for, for the developer rankings. So we've got a, a lot of the larger players, but then we've got um, a bit of a long tail going out as well. So Titan Solar Power has a case study of a very large residential solar installer that is using the system. Um, Ipsen Solar is another residential solar installer with a case study. And Headline Solar fits in that category as well. Then on the developer side, we've got Norwich Solar, which is in the um, Northeast of the US operating in, in the Vermont, New York area. And they um, are using it from a developer point of view, using instead of the residential milestone-based revenue recognition, they're using a, what I call a flatline whip kind of cost. So whatever your percentage of cost is, that determines what your revenue is. Costing method for what they're doing, which is more common in the CNI and utility scale processes. 
so they can speak about the visibility they have on their cash now from utilizing that process, mm -hmm. which is another key to being able to get more de solar deployed faster, is that you actually know when your capital is, where it is, and when it's coming, you know, back in. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like this is going to improve both forward-looking and backward-looking analysis and modeling. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of potential to be very exciting and to address um, a lot of these coordination issues that the en energy industry is struggling through right now. So complicated. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really quite a nightmare for the project managers. Um, and other departments, but uh, the project managers are torn in so many different directions and there's so much friction that it makes their job not fun, honestly. It, uh, it really can actually, especially when, when you're kind of used to the Amazon experience of life as, as we've kind of matured as a mm -hmm. general information consumer technology, you know, um, culture in the United States to see some of the antiquated ways things are handled in the solar industry. Um, you know, that currently we don't have a database that's common of all the products that we're using with this product registry that we're working on right now with the SunSpec and Orange Button group. And getting that together, so the manufacturers are putting together which products they have, and then the CEC is not using the spreadsheet but it would actually be referencing the same database for everybody. So you would even know clearly what the specs are in the different operating conditions for the products you're using would make a huge difference. And that level of normalizing product information, Amazon has been working really hard at it for well over a decade and they have made a lot of progress. It's really better across the consumer industries and we need to apply those learnings to get to these construction, um, into construction as well. Mm -hmm. So that it's easier and more project managers are interested in doing it and want to take it on. Yeah. I'm just curious, have you spoken with Panel Claw at all, the racking manufacturer? I haven't specifically, no. Okay. Because they're developing what's called Claw OS, mm -hmm. which is a, as Costa Nicolau, their CEO, describes it, and he's he'll be coming on the show later this year to, to talk more about this. But what he describes as one button engineering and permitting for flat roof commercial solar, and I presume they're using the AHJ registry, um, and mm -hmm. SunSpec. I, I don't I don't know. Uh, he and I have have not gotten down into the weeds yet, but I'm just curious how how that platform is is uh, similar and different than what you've done at Blue Banyan. Uh, so so at Blue Banyan, the the expertise of how the technical pieces fit together sounds like they would be building that in the Claw S that I haven't actually seen yet myself. So I'm totally interested in seeing what that is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I expect that the information that they're gathering about the products would be the same as, as what we would need in order to determine the ability for those products to work together effectively for a solution. And so, so I'm totally interested in, in hearing more about how yeah. how they're doing that and and what tools they're they're using well i'll introduce you and i i would be very surprised if if they didn't want to talk to you um but yeah, uh, sounds great costa is a is a is a wonderful charismatic leader for the industry very involved you know he's on the board of seia and um hmm. and his and his product is the number one racking product for flat roof commercial and right. rightfully so it is it is a very good product we've used many flat roof racking products and uh it's not that he doesn't have competition he does but uh dce comes very close in many regards 
Mm -hmm. But if he can, if he can uh, develop, well, see, he, they've been using Claw OS internally. That's the other thing. So this isn't just a, a new thing. They've been, they've been baking this, this pie for quite a few years. So anyway, let's get back to Blue Banyan. And what is the, what is, what are the barriers, I guess, to entry for installers? I'm sure there's, there's several that we could identify. And then how do you transcend those barriers? Um, because I think this is very, very critical for people who are interested in information technology and want to advocate for reducing the soft costs within the industry, but will very quickly hit real serious walls in their, in their organization. So, so one of the key barriers to growth for most solar installers is the amount of tribal knowledge that they only have in a few key brains. There's really a lot of dependency on heroes to pull different pieces of design or permitting or sales together in order to, to get an end product that works. Absolutely. And, and so in Solar Success, we're really working hard to pull out the information so that you can tune a project based on if it's in this AHJ, this one requires a three line drawing and this one doesn't. And you can actually encapsulate that tribal knowledge into the system. That is the key to being able to grow because if tribal knowledge takes a really long time to transfer, it may or may not be accurate, especially over time. And it, so, and then you're really dependent on some key individuals. So making that tribal knowledge and pulling it into consistent processes and procedures is one of the key leverage points that we use to help solar installers grow from like typically seven figures to eight figures is when this tribal knowledge barrier becomes mm -hmm. the, the stop, stop gap unless it gets addressed. And so it's a key piece to, to helping the seven figure businesses get to, to eight figures and nine figures. The next barriers that the companies really have has to do with, is really with having visibility about their business. So a lot of the project management data, it needs to be easy to collect and it needs to be part of your regular job flow that you would collect that data. Otherwise it, it doesn't get collected. And if you don't have the data, you can't think about it. You can't analyze it. You can't see what worked or what didn't work. And you fall into too much of a subjective space and not enough of an objective place so that you can't pivot. So collecting that project management data is, is a really key element to supporting a culture of continuous improvement where you can see that you had a problem, identify where it might be in the entire system, fix them all, and then get proactively notified should it ever occur again. These kinds of, of tuning for where it is that you're going are the key that we're looking to, to help those businesses really grow. So with Biden's 2035 challenge that we be carbon neutral by our power um, infrastructure, be carbon neutral by 2035, that requires that we install five times as much solar as we're installing today. The rate of installation has to be five times as, as fast. Right. And in order to do that, we have to be able to have clear, consistent processes that can be followed as we pull in more people to help us get the job done. We have to be able to onboard at quality quickly to be able to get that much work done well. So it, it is absolutely a challenge and it is a challenge that we are excited to, to um, overcome. We absolutely intend to crush it in that regard. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm curious, what about the field? How do, you know, that's the other thing is the field can be a black box uh -huh. and getting uh, real-time information from the field to the office, much less to the back office, uh -huh. is a tremendous challenge. And there are, are, we have a crawl, walk, run kind of solutions 
We have crawl solutions that get you your basic information, photos, and did you finish the job or not? Do you need to go back? And then we've got walk and run versions. Run Walking versions are where you're intelligently scheduling and able to see where everybody's at, what kind of problems they're having. You can see where they are physically with like little Uber and GPS kind of events. And then we've got the run version where they're able to look at your pipeline and optimize, you know, with the potentially scary AI where, where it is that people should go um, to maximize their productivity, that you can do a service call on the way back because this is the second half of a job, so it shouldn't take all day. Those kinds of optimizations can happen when you really know the skills of the employees and you have all of the data and parameters necessary, the weather, in order to make the right choices there. Mm -hmm. So Through composition, mm -hmm. what equipment you have in the field, what's been delivered to the site so far, what hasn't been delivered. There's a lot of moving parts to a commercial solar project mm -hmm. uh, or what I've now started calling distributed utility scale, you know, community solar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which, is, which is a very fast growing industry. Yep. I wanna circle back to, to barriers and then we'll wrap up here. We're almost out of time, but <clears throat> my initial question about barriers is, is more about, you know, culture and the willingness to try new tools. Uh, there's so many gotchas when companies try new, let's say accounting softwares, for example, mm -hmm. right? That from, there's a good, bad and ugly experience. And so managers become averse to trying new things because the integration last time was so painful or the tool that they've been forced to use is so uh, not user-friendly. Um, mm -hmm. But what are some of the, what are some of the barriers that, that people can expect or some resistance that they get? Let's say I, I want to go to my company and say, Hey, have you checked out Blue Banyan? Because this is going to, this is going to transform our business and make us more profitable and get, get us more business. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be a game changer. And they, and they roll their eyes. Mm -hmm. So, so we do encounter, we do absolutely encounter people who, who fundamentally, even after seeing the stats about what can happen, don't believe that they can do it. And some of the, the barriers on the technology, we have actually defined them well. And we've got a defined process for this is how you go through and the steps that your company is going to go through. So we know that our process works. We still, however, always need to engage the people in how they're doing that. So we're increasing the training programs and the visibility that we get there. So we, we did have an experience recently where we got all thumbs up from the managers saying that everything worked the way they'd expected to. And then three days before go live, they're like, wait, wait, this isn't the way this, I wasn't expecting that I had to do this step first. And we said, what do you mean? It's been this way the whole time. And then we found out that they hadn't logged in yet, even though they were willing to give us the thumbs up 10 days before then. So we're adding a lot of checks in on actually getting people to participate. And we're trying to make it fun, right? So some of our training programs, we've got prizes for who gets to the end result first and what they notice if they put in all the data correctly. So what is the system size that came out in your case? You know, working things like that, that if they're good at math, they could figure it out themselves, but that that just make it a little bit more fun to, to get engaged and to try it out. Because there is a fair barrier and and we've had a lot of software you've got to you've got to harmonize the software so you're on the same basis so that you can have that single source of an, a single source of truth or the experience of a single source of truth. And that is literally what the digitization is about. That is why orange button and that taxonomy is helpful because if we have the same terms and we're literally defining them the same way with the same units, with the same level of precision, then we're going to get those better outcomes. And it has been a process and people have gone through through a variety of different history and have PTSD. And 
we're just pulling them through with the like, there really is gold on the other side of this. It's worth the trouble. <laughs> Let's try it again. And some people, they'll just take more social proof before they see that. Other people, they're going to have that first mover advantage. So we're going to, we're, we're likely going to see the entire scale on adoption of the early adopters till it becomes mainstream. And then we'll, we will still have late adopters sure. after that phase. Yep. Well, maybe you can connect me with Norwich. I would love to do an interview with Norwich mm -hmm. and see what their experience has been. Uh -huh. And uh, before we tell our listeners how they can reach you, I'm going to make a couple of quick announcements. Uh -huh. The Solar Podcast lives evergreen content here at CESNRG.com forward slash podcast. Thought leaders like Andy Klump with Clean Energy Associates, Tom Tansy, as we've mentioned, reducing soft costs. He and I have had two interviews, um, one focused on Orange Button. Bernadette Del Chiaro fighting the good fight there in California and pushing back on some horrible, uh, horrible restrictions trying to be put on net metering. If you don't have net metering in your state, you don't have a good solar industry, guaranteed. And then tools and technology like Yada Energy and Omid Badkube, the CEO and founder of Yada, doing rooftop storage solutions. Other, other great topics here, grid interactive buildings, intelligent project siting tools with Pivot, so many good topics. So check us out. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. But we need thousands and thousands of more people to come into the industry. And so this podcast is a beacon of information for experts, young and old, uh, professionals new and established. So please tell your friends, and I want to thank Jan Rippingale from Blue Banyan. This has been really eye-opening, Jan. And I really look forward to learning more about your tool and um, hopefully bringing uh, some, you know, some live feedback from your customers to my audience. How can our listeners reach you? The easiest way to reach us is actually through bluebanyan.com, as my last name is hard to spell. Um, there's a contact us site on bluebanyan.com and you can just reach out and we will get in touch with you as quickly as we possibly can. Very good. Well, again, thank you so much, Jan. This is wonderful. And I look forward to seeing Blue Banyan blossom and let's grow solar and storage. <laughs>